Hi, um, I'm showing off a 3D printed robot wheel assembly that I've made. Uh, I'm using this little um, motor that you might find in a quadcopter. This is a really inexpensive one for what they do, but they have a lot of power compared to some of the cheap little robot gearbox motors you'll get that come with a plastic gearbox on them, but they, they want to break and they're not very powerful. This can make a flying robot, so it's pretty beefy. Um, they have some other advantages to this style of motor, so I wanted to make a 3D printable assembly that would you know, allow you to snap something like this together. So this is, you can see this will come out. Um, put that back in for now. I just want to show off what this does. That's nice and snug in there now. Now you can push on it. And I'm trying to, you know, deflect it, but it doesn't want to do it. Um, this is the first time I've gotten it together, so you can see that I did not allow enough room for the belts. So as soon as this video is over, I'm going to print another version of this with longer arms. Uh, you can see I already printed another version. This is the one I printed last night. Um, and these holes were too small. Um, oversight on the design there, so I changed that. Um, on this one, now everything fit together very nicely. Um, this just, uh, there's some flexibility in the design. So this actually just lifts apart. I'll, I'll disassemble it after the video, but I want to show you briefly how it works. Now just remember too that there's some slack on these belts. So I'm, I've already made the change. The change in software was only a you know, 30 seconds to change a couple of numbers. And now the next version I print will be longer here and here. This is just a representative um, version. And I've blacked one of the wheels, one of the nubs on the wheel, so you can see as it comes by what speed we have. This is, um, this is a motor from Hobby King. So it's the ST2204. Really cheap. I think they're five dollars. Um, this is um, a speed controller that came with an old remote control car. Or Sorry, this is a radio. Um, and this is a speed controller. Um, these are well, there's a lot of trade-offs to using these Chinese ones, and I want to make some some quality ones that do this job right. So one of the issues with these is they don't really know what the motor's doing, and they only really work they work best when the motor's spinning. So at low speeds, it has some difficulty. But that's something that can be changed with different electronics. So the mechanical design here that I'm showing off, um, you know, uh, it, it's capable of of really fine precision. So I'll, I'll show in a minute. This is a gear train. So when that motor turns, it turns this gear in the back here. And then that's got a small, so the I, I'm saying gears, these are obviously pulleys and belts, but gears and pulleys op operate with many of the same principles. So when this big one turns, it turns this little one, and then you have a little one turning a big one, so it makes it go slower. And that happens twice. You can see we have a little one turning a big one, and then a little one turning a big one. And these are bearings in here. These are skateboard bearings. Uh, so skateboard bearings are really common with 3D printers because they're just, they make so many skateboards every year that that size of bearing is a lot cheaper than what bearings normally cost. So you can get them uh, pretty high quality Chinese made um, skateboard bearings um, that, that work great. So you see I've got a printed shaft, uh, printed laid flat, and then this was printed with a hole in it, shoved through. Um, I'll make all the parts available for this stuff soon uh, as I fine-tune it. Um, these O-rings, these are rubber O-rings for um, sealing water out of, uh, you know, two, two areas that stick together. Um, I don't know if they make ideal drive belts. Uh, they might stretch over time, which would cause them to, to do this, uh, even if I make it bigger. So that's a concern, but uh, drive belts can be obtained. Uh, in any size that that will work well and they're uh, inexpensive just by virtue of they're just simple simple devices so cheap drive belts can be acquired if these o-rings don't work and the o-rings are definitely very cheap they're only you know a few cents a piece maybe, maybe these are 20 cents a piece at the price that I got them at um, and you can see here there's a, a shaft with a square in it so it's round on the sides where the o-ring where the the bearings go but here it's um, 
it's square. And that, that keeps these two together. These need to span the gap for this one. I didn't want to print a large feature that went between them. That would have taken an extra 45 minutes to print or so. So now I'm going to turn this on. It's capable of going very fast. It doesn't do well at these low speeds. You can see it stops and starts. There's a good, reasonable low speed that it can do without stopping and starting. Again, that, that slow speed issues is, is something that can be resolved with better electronics. And um, while motor control is not a simple task, it's also not. Um, you know, endlessly complex either. So it is definitely possible to build better motor drivers than these Chinese ones, which are designed for a remote control car and not for robots. The robots have different needs. A specialized controller would be better. And it goes two directions. So right now it's, it's a little slower in reverse. If I max it out, that's the maximum speed in reverse. And that's the maximum speed in forward. So you can, you can really tell the difference uh, in speed just by the sound. Um, and that's again because this Chinese motor controller is designed for a remote control car and it's desirable to have their reverse go slower. And this can be reprogrammed um, uh, without any special hardware using the stick. There's something in the manual you press and hold something and you do some stuff and you can reprogram it. So I, I have not done that. Um, so this Chinese controller would make an all right um, uh, controller, this, would, would be okay for this robot. But really the the thing that's important here is the um, the makeup of this. So robots can be really expensive when you have to buy a lot of custom parts. So the nice thing about a 3D printer is custom parts don't cost you any more than you know, any other parts. So um, low volumes are good for 3D printers. Um, and I'm trying to figure out basically how to do robotics for um, like a classroom environment. Um, so a teacher on the weekend could print out five of these assemblies and then uh, during the week they could talk about how the motor works and how the electronics works and they can get in teams of three or five and assemble a robot. You know, this is just one motor. You make another robot, so two of these, and it could drive around. Um, so you know, with a school campus having a 3D printer on board, they can teach students how to print their own robots, and I want to kind of inspire people. By showing off this stuff so this whole thing is pretty pretty easy to disassemble so i'll do that now oh you notice this so there's the motor that you get from the hobby stores for or a, a hobby websites for doing um, quadcopters and this is a propeller adapter they often come with them it's they're you know maybe only 50 cents a piece when you if you buy them separately and they're a lot better for holding on a screw than trying to put a set screw into your plastic part um but anyway so that comes off and then that comes right out. This unscrews. I think I used pliers to tighten it, so um, I'm not gonna not gonna unscrew that. But that just unscrews. It comes off, and this is a regular regular motor. Um, you can see we used a wedge to hold that in. Um, so this is a whole tapered part. It's got a one degree taper that works really well, um, and the receptacle has a one degree taper as well. So this this has this gets slightly narrower as it goes up in your view. Um, so this comes in from the bottom and tightens like that and tightens against, you know, whatever's on that surface. This is a very good way of holding things together. And you can see this auxiliary wedge here. This is the same principle. It's also got these grooves that might be used for locking something. I, I haven't tried that yet. But this is so that this whole assembly can be attached to something else. So this will go and sink onto something. And this is a good way of attaching these parts. Um, now you can see we freed the motor. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is take off this one because it's easier. Um, this, because of the design here, this is basically just flexible. Um, you, can, you can assume a certain amount of flexibility will be available to a, a printed part. And this is really not, not close to the bounds of what's allowed, so, or what, what would work. So this should be good. <clears throat> Comes off. Oh yeah, so I've got... It's wrapped around this one. I'm looking through the camera as I do this. There we go. Okay. So that comes off. And then there's just, you know, this is sitting on a shaft. This is on a shaft. This is a really simple, a square in a circle. It can't be 
you know, this is something that this is like play school. This is play school robots right here. Um, and this is what you want. Got these fine little wheels here. This, if you notice too, this has these grooves so it can kind of try to dig in the carpet. But if you look at this angle, they're almost completely through so that when it's going over a flat surface, it doesn't make a lot of loud sound. This is not a good material. This is not a good material for wheels because it's really slippery. So a rubber of some kind could be put over it. You could you could even take an O-ring and wrap it around a wheel. Anyway, that's that part. Um, and you can see the main assembly here. Um, I ended up just stretching this as well. These right now don't have anything holding them in. Usually I'll put a clip right where, right there on the shaft, I'll put a clip that snaps in so that this bearing can't slide out because as it is now, I gotta reach one second. As it is now, this bearing is, is not really held in by anything. So while this is vibrating, it could just fall out um, like this. And then this will go willy nilly and you don't want that. So. Typically, you'll put in a clip, and those are a really reliable thing that I've designed. Um, if I pull this out now, you can see that there's room here to slide the shaft through. So it comes out that way. Now this comes off, and this is the same principle as the other thing. It's a round print with a shaft going through it. These are the skate bearings. These are just, you know, really cheap. I, I can't recall. I think these are maybe 20, 25 cents a piece. Um, and this assembly uses one, two, three, four, uh, and a motor. So it's a dollar. And then these are the O-rings. So that's a 3D printed robot wheel assembly. Um, it's designed for a printer that's not high end. Um, I have an Ultimaker version one, um, which is a great printer. Uh, it, I don't keep mine super perfectly adjusted so you wouldn't need to be able to print this stuff um, I'm really working on designing stuff that you know, is useful to everybody so I don't don't want to require someone to know you know everything about their printer but if you can hit print you can build a robot that's what I'm working on